As per this OBS knowledge base article, Portable Mode loads the OBS configuration directory from the same path that the application is stored, allowing for easy relocation or running multiple instances without cross-contamination of profiles and scene collections. This means you can download the OBS zip and extract it to wherever you want. You don't need to run an installer application. The reason why I've been using portable mode is that I've been running two instances of OBS on the one PC, and both of these instances have the WebSocket server enabled. By using portable mode, I can define different server ports for the WebSocket server, and hence I can remotely control these instances from another PC using SAMI. While OBS does have launch parameters so you can load different profiles and scene collections, the WebSocket server is not something that can be defined as a launch parameter and is common to all profiles and scenes for that OBS collection. Up to now, all of this has been running on Windows 10. As part of my goal to migrate over to Linux, specifically the Bazite distribution, I've been working through what is required to make this happen. As per the same OBS knowledge base article, portable mode on Linux is not supported at this time. With this being a roadblock in my plans, I have figured out how to achieve the equivalency of portable mode on Linux. The solution is based around running the Flatpak distribution of OBS. Specifically, you create a new home folder location and then define that home environment variable when you launch OBS with Flatpak. This instance of OBS will now have its own configuration files and ultimately allow you to run these instances with different WebSocket servers running on different ports. This solution is easy to set up and also easy to migrate an existing installation of OBS to this method. So let me walk you through how to do both. These steps have been performed on Bazite, however, any distribution using Flatpak should be able to follow these steps. The following steps assume that you've already installed OBS through Flatpak. The first step is to create a directory to be the home location. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to create a new folder under slash var slash home called camera. Next, I need to grant the user Smirkin ownership and permissions to this location. Smirkin is the user logged on who will be running OBS. Obviously, substitute this with your username. And that's it. You can now launch OBS using the following command to define this new location and its home. OBS will open like it's the first time it's been run. You can follow these steps or cancel the wizard, it's totally up to you. You will now notice that all the OBS configurations are now located in slash var slash home slash camera slash dot var slash app slash com dot OBS project dot studio slash config slash OBS hyphen studio. This launch command is how you will need to start OBS each time so that it uses this location. This can be easily added to your application launcher settings. I'm using KDE, so I can simply right click it in the applications menu and select edit application. From here, I can populate the environment variables field with home equals slash var slash home slash camera. And after clicking save, the application will launch using that location every time. So how do you migrate your existing OBS configuration to this new location? The first step is to delete the freshly created OBS-Studio directory. Now copy the OBS-Studio directory from your existing location to your new location. I also recommend renaming the old location so it doesn't get used again. In the new location, you'll need to edit the relevant global.ini and user.ini files and change any directories to point to the new location. You'll also need to edit the relevant profiles and scenes any and JSON files as well. A simple find and replace will get them all changed. It's okay to leave your file path locations pointing to your original locations, but I do recommend changing the file name formatting string so that each instance creates unique and easily identifiable files. That's really all there is to it. Simply repeat these steps for each new instance of ABS you want to create 
and you'll have multiple instances of OBS running. You might want to add the hyphen hyphen multi argument to your launch command so you don't get warned about running multiple instances. Just to be clear, each instance of OBS you are running is linked to the same Flatpak installation. So when that gets updated, all instances are running the same version. This method slightly differs from portable mode in Windows where the entire application instance is separate from another. So you can update them in any order and more specifically, backing up that whole folder makes it easy to roll back to a previous version if needed. Talking of updates, your OBS will automatically be updated whenever a new release is published via Flatpak. In the event that this breaks your OBS setup, it is possible to roll back to a previous version. Open a terminal and query the available commits with the following command. The current stable version is 32.0.1, however the commit list doesn't show version numbers, but I suspect that this commit on the 28th of July would be the last version of the 31 release. To revert to this commit, run the following command. Once it's updated, when I open OBS, you can see we are now at version 31.1.2. This is what I was after. You can also see this with the flatpak list command. However, the next time flatpak runs an update, it will automatically update OBS to the latest version. So we need to run another command to prevent this from happening. Now when you try and do a flatpak update, you won't see OBS in the list. If you specifically try and update OBS, it'll tell you there's nothing to do. To remove the mask to allow OBS to be updated, the following command is required. Now when you do an update, it'll upgrade to the latest stable version. Now while all of these steps I just showed you weren't specific to running multiple instances, it's handy knowing how to roll back to a previous version of Flatpak. Honestly, I'm adding this to the video to help out future smirking. The only downside I've seen so far is that in System Monitor, the way it reports the OBS usage for multiple instances is weird. You can end up with values over 100%. There's nothing I can do about it, but don't panic if you observe this behavior. Well, that's all I have for today. I do have more videos planned on migrating from Windows to Linux, so stay tuned for those. Are you currently making the leap to Linux? Drop a comment below with your experiences, feedback or questions. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you are doing well and I look forward to seeing you soon.